Chapter five, we were surprised to find the maid cart right where we left it when we got back. It had not moved an inch. In the time that we were gone, my dad had only managed to clean two rooms. I don't know how I'm going to get through all these rooms, he said, wiping his sweaty brow with the back of his hand. I'll help you, I offered, rolling up my leaves. In China, sometimes I sometimes help my grandmother scrub her kitchen floor. No, my mom said, I don't want you near that stuff. She pointed at the maid cart filled with various colorful bottles of cleaning solutions. Then I'll man the front desk, I said. I'll call you if I need anything. I ran up the, of the room and down the stairs before she could say no. I've got this, I told myself on my way over to the front desk. This was not going to be like the restaurant th this time. I was not going to fail. All I had to do was hand out keys and take the cash. How hard could it be? I got into position, climbing onto the front desk stool and crossing my hands on the desk. I did not take, it did not take long before the customers started coming. Unfortunately, when they saw me, the first thing they did was ask to speak to the manager. So then I had to go get my mom. Up and down the stairs, I ran. Every time she had to stop what she was doing to run down the stairs with me and into the front office just to hand the customer the key and take the money. By the 15th time, the, by the fifth time, I thought, enough. I made a little sign and put it in the front desk. It read, Mia Tang, manager. The next time a customer came in and asked to see the manager, I pointed to the sign and I stared really hard at him. In science class at my last school, I learned that if you want a mammal to do something, you should stare at it. That's because mammals are social creatures and we're really into hetero, uh, hi hierarchy. At the top, you have your alpha, the leader, and then your betas and omegas. The difference between an alpha and a beta is the alpha wins every staring contest. So I stared and stared until my eyes were blurry and I was starting to see doubt. And even then I refused to blink. Finally, the customer broke down and said, okay, okay, fine. I just need a room for the night. Yes, it worked. That will be $20, $20 plus task, I told him. I watched as he dug into his pocket, pulled out a 20 and a five and slid the bill across the desk. I gave him back his change and his key. The whole time, I couldn't believe it was really happening. I was just a kid, but I had asked an adult to hand me money, and he actually did it. I repeated my strategy with everyone else who walked through the door that day. Point, stare, point, stare. Eventually, I didn't even need to stare people. I didn't need to even stare. People just went ahead and gave me the money. I was so happy. I hopped off the stool, opened up the vending machine, and treated myself to a cream soda. I got one for Hank, too, and went to find him. Unfortunately, he wasn't home. Fred, one of the other weeklies, said he was working and wouldn't be home until late. When I got back to the front desk, the phone was ringing. The Calavista had an old-fashioned orange phone with a ton more buttons than a usual one. I didn't know what the extra buttons did, but for a second, I fantasized that it would push the, that if we pushed the wrong button, the motel would start flying. Hello, I asked, picking up the receiver. Is this the front desk? A voice asked. I looked at the glowing light and saw that the call was coming from room six, which I had just rented out to Mr. Stein. I cleared my voice. <laughs> Mr. Stein, how can I help you? I asked, putting on my best customer service voice. I need a wake-up call tomorrow at 5 a.m., Mr. Stein said. Wake-up call, 5 a.m., I repeated. You got it. Don't forget, I have to leave then for a very important meeting. I promised I wouldn't and hung up. For the next half hour, I studied the complicated phone system. There was a manual in the drawer, but it was one of those manuals that was impossible to read. It was like the manual they wrote for the walkie-talkies my mom used to make at the factory in China. Her walkie-talkies were great, 
But when they ship them to America, nobody could figure out how they work because the manual were full of typos and mistakes. I chuckled and wondered if the Calavista phone system was also made in China, like me. It made me feel strangely close to it. All right, old friend, I said to the phone system, let's do this. I punched in the code for the wake up call and entered in the room number and time. To my amazement, the phone system made a beep. It worked. Pride swelled inside me as I drifted to sleep that night. It was a glorious first day. I'd rent out 12 rooms, seven of which I'd done all by myself. Not only that, I'd gotten the phone system to work. I didn't need to worry about getting up early to wake up Mr. Stein. I could sleep easy knowing the awesome phone system would do it for me. Then the morning came. Okay, so let's pause here. Um, kiddos, can you make a, um, a guess, right? Can you kind of guess what's going to happen? Yeah. Do, do you think the phone system is going to work? Or do you think um, maybe, you know, the phone system didn't work? And what do you think would happen? Well, guess. And then we will continue. <laughs> 